I heard a tough case this morning. Psychologists say that most people outgrow the angry tantrums teenagers display. For today's couple, angry tantrums grew into one of the major issues that brought them in to divorce court. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Josefina Corona and Christian Silva. The two of you have been married for four years, but you've been together for 14 years. You do not, however, want to be married anymore. Ms. Corona, why don't you uh, start me out by telling me a little bit about your relationship and why you've ended up in divorce court here today? Well, Your Honor, um, we went to high school together. Uh huh. We've been together for 10 years, been married for four years. Um, I was in the ninth grade. He was in the 11th grade when we met. Our, um, our relationship was great at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, we had two daughters. After that, we decided to move to Florida. Okay. How old were you when you had the, the, the girl? 18 years old. Okay. So we decided to move to Florida to give our daughters a better, a better life. He started his own business, um, a limo driving company. So after that, everything was great. But the problem started when we got married. After we got married, like three years after, we was arguing so much. Well, what did, what did I, saying I do change? He's starting to get jealous. To... But he wasn't jealous before? No, everything but was But after great. he married you, he got jealous? Yes. He's... Now let's ask him what happened. Mr. Silva, did that happen? Well, um, we separate after we married. Yeah. A year after our marriage. We just decided that um, it would be best, because we was arguing so much, it would be best if we just, like, separate for some time. And um, what ended up happening is throughout the separation, she ended up meeting with somebody else, and she ended up getting with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I have, jeal I have okay. jealous How long were issues. you separated before she ended up with somebody else? Um, it was less than three months. Less like, than three months? Did you not date when you separated? At the beginning, no. At the beginning, no. Then I found somebody. I started kind of getting into this dating. Right. It was kind did of Did you expect serious. that? Did you guys agree? Or did you expect that she wasn't going to date when you were separated? I mean, you've gone your separate ways. Or was it just clearly, let's just give it a break to clear our heads? Or I mean, I thought uh, it was just for us to clear our heads. I didn't think we were going to... Um, she was going to start dating, mm. so that kind of threw me off, you mm. know? So is that why you started dating, she, because she was dating? Kind of, yeah. It was, it was, yeah. How long was it before you two got back together? After that, about a year and a half. After I, she seen that I was dating, she came back to me, and she said she wanted us to work it out again. You know, we got the kids and stuff. Right, and right. So you, get, you decided to give it another shot? Yeah. What were you guys fussing about before you broke up, though? What was going wrong? Well, I think uh, prior to that, it was, it was kind of my fault because I was hanging out a lot. You know, I was partying and and not, you know, being... Not, a... not, not, not walking the straight and narrow like a husband. Correct, correct. I admit and to that, yeah. So you weren't through playing? Yeah. During your first year of marriage. Is that, is that an accurate reflection of what happened? He was just going out too much? Yes. And drinking too much. And drinking too mm -hmm. much. Were you drinking too much? Yeah, you know, partying, drinking almost every day. So, yeah. So, what happened after you got back together? After we got back together, um... She let this other guy go, right? There was, there was, was there ever any issue of back and forth when she's seeing him and seeing you or this, that, and the other thing? Well, on the issue, there was a big, um, there was a little altercation because as, because we were, since he was, we were separated, you know, she stood with the, with, in the condo. I kind of, like, set this rule for, for the guy not to be there, you know? Right. Around my kids, you know? And, yeah. And one day I went to visit my kids, and, and the guy was there, and it was, like, a little altercation. And, um, and then that set it off. After that, I said, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. If so she... you and the dude got into it? A little bit, yeah. 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 More like I got into him, yeah. 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 He, just, he let me know he wanted to fight. <laughs> he just let me know he wanted to fight. That's all right. That's all right. I mean, you know. Uh, what happened first? You decided to get back with him first or you got rid of the guy first? 
Well, I got rid of the guy first. Well, actually, the separation happened because of him. He wanted to break up mm -hmm. for a while. So after... Um... Did you just want to be free? <laughs> well, for a moment... I, I, since we were arguing so much, I figured, you know what, let's explore it. Let's give us some space, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be... You know, her you finest, saw what happened. Well, I almost she got found replaced. some other yeah. guy, yeah. After that, I was like, yeah. Okay. He started dating first, yeah. so he didn't want me to date anyone. I wasn't really anyone. dating. It was just, you know, mingling and stuff, like Mingle. friends. You know? So uh, why were you so surprised that she started dating when you were mingling? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, did you really think it was a break for you and not for her? <laughs> I was, no. <laughs> That's right. Um... I was just surprised because it was like her, her side was kind of serious, you know? How like... surprised could you be? <laughs> <laughs> you let that out loose? They're going to flop. You can't, you, you know what I mean? It really, seriously. Yeah. There's, you know, they're, they're going to be in line looking for it. You got to keep that in mind, my man. Correct. <laughs> yeah. don't, you know, don't get, don't get. Oh, yeah, I, I learned. I... He said because I have children, nobody's going to look at me. That's what he thinks. Oh, he don't know anything. <laughs> Apparently, you know, you could have 17 people still be looking for you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think she's as affectionate as I want her to be. I think that's the way she is. You know, I just think that sometimes guys want more affection, you know? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Ms. Corona, you say your husband has a bad temper. Why don't you tell, give me a few examples other than him getting on that guy that you were with? that would demonstrate that to me? Very bad temper. Like, let's say we stuck in traffic. If the light changes, he starts honking, he starts cursing, move out, move out the way. Oh, yeah, who doesn't like traffic? Who likes traffic, you know? That's... Nobody <laughs> likes traffic. Yeah. I'm, you know, I agree that nobody likes traffic, but not everybody's cussing and honking. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like that, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Are you cussing and honking with the kids in the car? Oh, uh, yes. I was... Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. Right. How uncool is that? It's not cool at all. Yeah. But, you know, what I say is, is, if I have a bad temper, she she also has a bad temper. Oh, and we'll get to that. We, we're going to finish talking about your bad okay. temper first. What other examples do you have of his, his, his failure to control his temper? If I cook for him and the food is not like he wants it to be, he makes me recook the food again until the, the food is cooked right. Is he nice about it or is he cranky no, about it? he's cranky. Are you cranky about the food, Mr. Silva? Well, if I feel if she's not putting it all in, like if she's not making it out of her heart, I don't think the food, you know, they say when you cook from the heart, it comes out better, <laughs> so. Who says that? <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> I cook with all the love and care in the world. The other day, my son said, your cooking is kind of ew. <laughs> <laughs> And then he listed the seven good meals I've made in the 23 years he's been with me. Yeah. I ain't mad. <laughs> I can't cook. You know, cooking is like anything else. You can have an off night. You know, anybody can have an You can't get mad about that and accuse her of not cooking with love because yeah. she didn't, you know, it wasn't exactly the way well, you wanted it. I just don't want it to be like cooking as a burden for her. I want her to be like, you know, to be proud of her dish and, you know, to be like... You wanted her to be excited about the meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> as I am like, excited when I eat it, you know? Okay. So... When you go, are you cheering all the way to work? Huh? I no, said, are you cheering no. all the way to work? <laughs> no. I mean, cooking is work. You know what I mean? You want her to, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's not... I'm so happy to be putting this meal together for my man. Just let me flip this one more time. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's a job. It's part of her gig. Some people enjoy cooking. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. And every once in a while, you make a jacked-up meal. <laughs> yeah. 
Just like you screw up at work on, on occasion, right? Yeah, yeah. Other, other than the other guy, what what is your main complaint about Miss Corona? I would say um, affection. I would say affection. Like, I don't think she's as affectionate as I want her to be. I think that's the way she is. You know, I just think that sometimes guys want more affection, you know? I mean, she are does Are you talking things. affection she or are you talking sex? She does very romantic things. No, I'm not. He wants that every day. It was clarification. Uh, what? He wants that every day. <laughs> Three times a day. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit true. It's just fine. It's a little bit true, but... I, that's interesting. I don't get a lot of that from guys, that I need more affection. I think that's very thoughtful. Why don't you ex explain to me what kind of affection you would like her to show you? Now, pay attention. Well, you know, like, I would say, like, you know, maybe more kisses, more hugs. If we're watching TV together, you know, like, cut her up and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. You say he likes a lot of sex. Mm -hmm. Are you scared <laughs> that if you a little kiss on the cheek will lead to 30 minutes of action. No, I'm not scared. You're not scared of that? No. So did you hear what he asked for? Because I always ask men to hear what their women are asked. Did you hear what he asked for? Yes. Do you think you can give him what he asked for? It's kind of hard because since we argue most of the time, he curses at me, like, he calls me the B word. Like, so every time he, he wants to kiss me or hug me, it's in my head and I can't forget it. I got you, so that's what we're gonna talk about then. It was that separation when she like got with this person that, that is like, you know, I haven't been able to like. Fully get over that. Yeah, so I feel like she betrayed me. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. So, Mr. Silva, she, she accused you of saying some very unkind things to her when you're angry, and I think we've all agreed that you have a bit of a temper. Do you, when you are angry, uh, treat her in a manner that is, that is, is, is disrespectful? I would say I don't... It's just... It was that separation when she, like, got with this person that, that is, like, you know, I haven't been able to, like... Fully get over that. Yeah. So I felt like she betrayed me and she was out, you know? Doing what you were doing. <laughs> not. I mean, not like that. No, seriously. Well, yeah, doing what I was doing before, but now... Nah, I stopped all of that. That's how come I, I'm, I'm telling her that if I'm making those sacrifices, I don't go out, yeah. I'm through with my No, boys. but I'm saying when you separated, you said mm -hmm. you were mingling, that you were dating, and she did that as well. Yeah. And, and I think that sometimes, well, it struck close to his home. It, the male ego is this huge, huge thing, and it's one of the most hyperbolic emotions that you can have. It's how a man feels about how other people feel about him. It is a deep, deep thing. And I'm not getting mad at you, but I'm just trying to explain it to you. So what happened was he thought of you as his, mm -hmm. even when you weren't together. And then when he realized you didn't think of you as his. It struck him at the deepest part of himself. I mean, his whole person was implicated in that. And he's still hot about it. He's insecure about it. Because he felt you belonged to him because you were his since you were 18. The idea of you with another man at all, ever, struck at the, the core of his personage and he can't get past it. How close did I come? Very close. Yeah. That's true. You know that's your problem and not her problem, right? I just, I gotta suppress that, you know? You don't have to suppress it. You have to deal with it. Do you understand? There's two separate things. You have to be man enough 
to look it in the eye. She was with another guy because I was with other women. I, I was looking for a freedom that I wanted. She had it, too. She's a woman. She's grown. She has needs. She has decided that I am now the one. I don't want this other guy. She's even... She's tested out something else, didn't want it. She came back to me, and I'm man enough to deal with that, and we're going to move forward. You got daughters, right? Yes. And I'm going to give my wife the life I want my daughters to have because they will... <laughs> they will live whatever script you write for them. So if you, li you write a script that says, Mommy is a B and an H because Daddy can't handle the pain of not being her one and only, then they're going to grow up and marry a guy and they're going to think it's quite normal to be a B and an H and be screamed at and be yelled at because that's what mommy took from daddy. Mm -hmm. That's not what you want to sell to them, is it? No. So what you have to do is bring it up to the surface and deal with it. It does not make you less than a man that she got somebody else. It doesn't make her love you any less that she was able to move on when you decided you wanted something else and you wanted to be free. And it doesn't make you susceptible to any, uh, you know, nobody's laughing at you, nobody thinks you're foolish. None of that happened. It was a learning experience for both of you, and you're a grown man, and you can handle it. Do you understand that? Yes, correct. Live that and believe it. And if, 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 you, if you can't get next to it, We'll give you a tape of this, and I'll tell you over and over again <laughs> every day. In divorce court, couples tell me everything about their relationships. Want to share your experience? Join the conversation on our Twitter page at Divorce Court. On Facebook, check out other fans and their intimate issues. You know everybody has something to say about love. What's on your mind? So, Ms. Corona, you don't want to really leave this guy, do you? No, I do not. You want to keep him? You love him? He's I good do. to you guys as kids? He's a good dad? He, he is a good dad. I can front on that. <laughs> what do you need him to change in order for you to live comfortably with him? Um, I want him to be able to trust me more. Because mm -hmm. he goes on my social media. He, he goes through my messages. He goes through my emails. He goes through my phone. Have you ever found anything suspect in your travels? I don't... It might be suspect because of the past thing that I might be... Yep. You know, uh -huh. making stories that are... Yeah. Might be that. Yeah. But nothing... I've never found nothing concrete. Mm -hmm. No. And I tell you, anything that she puts in there, if you're looking at it through a lens of, 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 of concern and insecurity, you're going to see something wrong there. And it has nothing to do with what she's doing and nothing to do with what who she's talking to, it has to do with what you're afraid of. Don't let your fears dictate the rest of your life. Make, make a decision that you can... You, put, she ain't going nowhere. She's still with you, hothead and all. <laughs> right? Leave, put the social media down. You're not gonna stop anything. If she wants to, if she wants to go, she can go. When another guy, she wants to be with you, 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 you skulking around behind her with, her with your head over her shoulder, it's not gonna change a thing. Oh, the thing that will keep her with you is, is being calm and loving. That's what'll keep her. Right. Not, not suspicions, not checking, not anger, but love and care. And to, you know what I mean? Yes. That'll keep her with you. And that'll keep your little girls in a position to get a guy that's gonna treat them well. Yeah. Because you, I mean, I mean, you're the guy. You're the standard bearer. Yeah. They don't get it, you know what I mean? If you're not, if, if if you play in the role of, of, a, of a bad boy, you're going to have a whole lot of people to fight with in the coming years. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I understand. Yeah. Do the right thing, Mr. Silva. I think you're a good guy. Help him out with it. This matter is adjourned. I don't know if you caught it or not, but I saw Christian's face change when I spoke to him. He did something that is normally very difficult for people. He took in criticism that was real, true to his heart. He listened to it, he heard it, he heard, saw the truth in it, and then he made a decision to change. <laughs>